catching a 70-meter booster with mechanical arms? The industry laughed. SpaceX did it. Now leaked documents reveal their next target. Landing Starship's upper stage on a drone ship. The challenge is massive. Over 100 tons hitting the deck with more than 6 meganewtons of thrust. Current platforms weren't built for even half that force. How will they engineer something strong enough to survive? Subscribe to follow this story. Let's dive right in. When SpaceX unveiled Starship in 2016, the entire aerospace industry was watching a fundamentally different approach to spaceflight take shape. Every operational rocket at the time was partially expendable, at best. Falcon 9 brought back its first stage, sure, but the upper stage always burned up or crashed into the ocean. Starship? Both stages were designed from day one to come home. The full stack stands 120 meters tall. The super heavy booster alone is 70 meters with 33 Raptor engines, and the upper stage reaches 50 meters. But here's what most people missed back then. The real revolution wasn't just about reusability. It was about how SpaceX planned to recover these massive machines. Between 2018 and 2019, SpaceX engineers started talking about something that sounded completely insane. Instead of landing legs on the booster, they proposed catching it mid-air with a tower. Think about that for a second. A 70-meter tall rocket weighing dozens of tons descending from space and you're going to grab it with mechanical arms? The reaction was predictable. Even Falcon 9 fans who'd watched boosters land on drone ships thought this was too far. What happens if the timing is off by half a second? What if the alignment is wrong by a few centimeters? One mistake and you've got millions of dollars of hardware and a launch tower turned into scrap metal. SpaceX didn't care what the critics said. Construction of the launch tower at Starbase began in 2021. The completed structure rises 146 meters into the Texas sky, fitted with two massive steel arms, those now famous chopsticks. These arms can slide vertically along the tower, and they're engineered to support the full mass of Super Heavy. But here's the brilliant part most people overlooked. The booster itself was redesigned with reinforced hard points near the top, specifically for this capture method. Why would SpaceX remove landing legs and commit to something this risky? The answer is pure operational logic. Landing legs add weight, complexity, and turnaround time. Every kilogram of landing leg is a kilogram that could be payload. Plus, once a booster lands downrange, you need to transport it back to the launch site. That takes time and money. With tower catch, the booster returns exactly where it needs to be. After capture, you can place it directly back on the launch mount. In theory, you're looking at same-day reflight capability. But could it actually work? Late 2024 gave us the answer. After liftoff, Super Heavy separated at roughly 2 minutes 40 seconds. The booster flipped, fired its engines for the boost back burn, and started falling back towards Starbase. Seven to eight minutes after launch, it appeared, dropping from the sky, engines roaring, using thrust and grid fins to align itself perfectly between those arms. The chopsticks closed. The booster was caught. For the first time in history, an orbital-class rocket booster was recovered in midair. What the industry called impossible just became routine. Now here's where things get interesting. Super heavy was solved. But what about the upper stage? That's where those leaked documents come in, and that's where the real challenge begins. After separation, Starship's upper stage continues burning for several more minutes until it hits orbital velocity, about 7.8 kilometers per second. Depending on the mission profile, it might do a partial orbit or complete a full 90-minute trip around Earth. During all the test flights through 2023, 2024, and early 2025, SpaceX deliberately crashed these upper stages into the ocean after re-entry tests. Controlled splashdowns, fully planned. But internal filings now reveal the next phase, 
landing Starship's upper stage on a massive drone ship positioned far offshore. Sounds familiar, right? SpaceX has been landing Falcon 9 boosters on drone ships for years. So what's the big deal? Here's what makes this completely different. Those Falcon 9 drone ships are about 90 meters long, converted barges floating in the ocean. A Falcon 9 booster has a dry mass around 25 tons and uses a single Merlin engine producing roughly 845 kilonewtons of thrust for landing. The burn lasts just a few seconds, and the booster descends vertically the entire time. Clean, relatively simple, proven. Now scale that up to Starship. The upper stage stands 50 meters tall and 9 meters in diameter. Even with most propellant gone, it weighs over 100 tons, four times heavier than a Falcon 9 booster. For landing, Starship needs two or three Raptor engines firing. Each Raptor produces approximately 2.3 meganewtons of thrust. Do the math. That's more than six meganewtons of force slamming into the deck. That's not just several times more than Falcon 9. That's approaching the thrust levels you see during Falcon 9 liftoff, not landing. Can you picture the engineering nightmare? Current drone ships would buckle under that kind of punishment. SpaceX needs to build something fundamentally different, larger, more rigid, more stable, capable of absorbing forces no maritime platform has ever handled before. And that's just the platform. Here's another problem, landing hardware. Falcon 9 boosters deploy legs right before touchdown. Starship doesn't have landing legs. They were removed when SpaceX committed to tower catches. To land on a drone ship, you need deployable legs that can support extreme loads. Where do you put them? The bottom section of Starship already houses six Raptor engines, fuel lines, and critical structural components. Integrating heavy-duty landing legs into that crowded space means major redesign work. How do you fit them without compromising engine performance or adding too much mass? The flight dynamics make this even more complex. Falcon 9 boosters re-enter engine first and stay vertical. Starship does a belly flop. It enters the atmosphere sideways, using four massive flaps to control heating and drag. Only in the final seconds before landing does it flip upright, relight engines, and attempt vertical touchdown. Every single maneuver has to be executed flawlessly while the drone ship is moving with ocean waves and wind. One miscalculation, and you've got 100 tons of spacecraft missing the platform entirely or coming in at the wrong angle. This analysis reveals something crucial. SpaceX isn't just scaling up existing technology. They're solving multiple unprecedented engineering challenges simultaneously. Platform strength, landing leg integration, precision control during atmospheric re-entry, and pinpoint landing on a moving target. Each problem alone would be considered cutting edge. Together, it's the kind of challenge that would make most aerospace companies walk away. But here's why betting against SpaceX might be a mistake. Landing an orbital booster vertically was impossible until it wasn't. Catching a 70-meter booster with mechanical arms was fantasy until it happened. SpaceX has a pattern. They tackle problems the industry calls unsolvable. They fail publicly, they iterate rapidly, and then they make it look easy. The tower catch took years of development and multiple Starship test flights. Each flight taught them something. Each explosion was data. And when they finally caught that booster, it worked on the first attempt. So why is SpaceX pushing this hard on drone ship recovery when tower catches already work? The answer comes down to one number, one million dollars. That's Musk's target cost per Starship launch. Sounds absurd, right? Let's break down why it's not. A Falcon 9 launch costs around $67 million today. United Launch Alliance's Vulcan runs between $100 to $110 million. Europe's Ariane 6 sits at $70 to $90 million, and it's fully expendable. Blue Origin's New Glenn hasn't flown yet, but estimates place it well above $60 million. 
NASA's Space Launch System, over $2 billion per flight when you factor in program costs. Every single one of these systems throws away expensive hardware on every mission. Starship changes the equation entirely. The super heavy booster gets caught and reused immediately. If the upper stage returns intact on a drone ship instead of drowning in the ocean, suddenly nothing is thrown away. Both stages fly again. And again. And again. When a rocket flies dozens or hundreds of times, the cost structure transforms completely. You're no longer paying to build new hardware for every launch. You're paying for fuel, inspections, and operations. Here's where the math gets interesting. Liquid methane and liquid oxygen for a full Starship launch costs only a few hundred thousand dollars at current prices. Add in ground operations, labor, and maintenance, and you're still nowhere near the cost of building a brand new rocket every time. That's how SpaceX arrives at the million dollar target. It's not marketing hype, it's basic economics of reusability taken to its logical extreme. The drone ship landing is the final piece of this puzzle. Without it, Starship's upper stage keeps crashing into the ocean and the economics don't work. With it, SpaceX unlocks true, full reusability and potentially reshapes the entire space industry's cost structure. Will they pull it off? Based on their track record, the smart money says yes. If you want to follow this story as it develops, hit that subscribe button for Space Update 24 hours. We'll be tracking every test flight, every landing attempt, and every breakthrough. Drop a comment below. Do you think SpaceX will nail the drone ship landing on the first try? Or will it take multiple attempts? Like this video if you're excited to see where this goes and share it with anyone who still thinks catching rockets is impossible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.